Hi all, I wanted to talk today about assignment 5.2, which is the web banner ad rep. So um, what we'll be doing is taking the ad banner that we started working on last week, modifying some of the materials that you used in the magazine ad, and then, um, you know, just working on um, the overall layout and look of the web banner, including a small animation. So um, as you're looking through this, you know, make sure you read each of these bullet points, um, you know, focusing on your color, typography, imagery, um, when adapting the ad, considering what parts of the magazine ad design are no longer needed, and um, what new elements might need to be introduced. So, you know, thinking back to that call to action button that I talked a little bit about last time. Um, thinking about your typography, again, your, your imagery, um, you know, making that web banner a consistent look and feel to, um, you know, what you created with the ad. So it's apparent that it's part of the same campaign. So if we click into the guidelines and rubric here, um, you will prepare one banner ad rough by modifying the digital materials used in the magazine ad and optimizing the imagery files into both a layered PSD file and a GIF of the animated banner ad design. So um, you're going to do some basic Photoshop animation, which I will talk a little bit about. and. Um, just to be clear, the call to action is the only portion of the banner that should be animated. So, um, you know, don't feel like you have to create anything extraordinary here. I will say, um, just from an industry standard perspective, that um, typically files like this do have to be somewhat small in size. So um, there are usually are, you know, requirements as far as the size goes. And if you try to do a little bit too much as far as the animation, that is going to increase your file size. So that's something to take into consideration. So um, let's just go ahead and get started. So I have my ad open and I also have my web banner open so you can see, you know, Basically, what I created last week is, um, you know, what I am focusing on in the ad. Now, there are definitely some elements that I could add here. Um, I have that headline area that I created. I have the logo and I created a button. So um, the button is very important here. Um, having a call to action, um, you know, something that's going to entice the viewer to click to learn more. And of course, the other element that I want to add in here is my little bit of text that I have. So you may have slightly more body copy in your ad. Obviously, you're working with a much smaller um, area. So I would say if you have, you know, this type of offer that you can paste into your ad, definitely do so. And I think what I want to do is add this along the bottom. So I'm probably going to have to move my headline up just a little bit. And we can, you know, adjust the placement of things as we go. And I'm going to add a text box in here. And we can just copy in that offer text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this headline just a little bit smaller so that there's a little bit of breathing room. I'm not holding the shift key. So you can see if I hold the shift key, it's going to stretch. If I don't, it's just going to retain the proportions that it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up just a little bit so it aligns. You can see I have my guides turned on, so it's showing me that it's sort of aligned with the bottom of the logo and um, it's aligning with the, the text as well. So um, you can also add additional imagery in here. In my ad, I have four different images 
not including the background image that I already have. So um, all of this is just, it's not gonna fit in a web banner. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my flip flops. So I'm gonna copy these and then I'll just go ahead and paste it in as a smart object in my layout. Take a second. And I'll figure out where I want to have these placed. If I want to put them on an angle or something like that, I could do that. So for now, what I'm going to do is focus on the button. So the call to action area. So there's multiple ways that you can create this. And I demonstrated, you know, making a rounded rectangle last week, which you can do just using the um, rectangle tool. And you can experiment with, you know, if you wanted to have a rounded corner, you can. If you don't, this can be found up here and you can hover over this and sort of slide it. So if you want it really rounded, you take it up pretty high. If you want it to have no rounded edge at all, you would then um, have zero pixels chosen. So I'm just going to change my fill color so it has no fill. And then um, we'll use, let's say, the purple for the stroke. So I'm going to just draw in a rectangle here. And you can see it doesn't have any rounded corners. I like having the rounded corners just because I think it gives it more of a button feel. Again, if you take this up, let's say maybe 15. Let's take a look at the difference here in the roundness of the corners. So you can see it gives it just a little bit of a, a different look. And on my um, stroke, it looks like I have a dashed edge. So I'm going to make sure that I don't have a stroke added. Now, if you want to add a stroke, you certainly can. So I'm going to go ahead back into that. And let's say we want to have the green color as the stroke. The size of that. I'm just going to go ahead and take this rectangle and move it down a little bit. Now, there are multiple other things you can do. If you wanted to add a slight gradient to this, you can. I'm going to go ahead and choose the color. We'll, we'll choose the green as a foreground color. So I have the green selected as my foreground and I have the purple selected as my background color. So if I wanted to add, you know, a slight gradient into this, you can certainly do so. I'm going to just do this by going into the effects panel here. And we can do a gradient overlay. And if I go into the gradient, it's just choosing one that I have. If I go to basics, you can see it has my foreground and background selected. So you could do something like this. And of course, you know, you can change the style of the gradient. Um, you can make it radial, which I don't really love. You can adjust the scale of that, just kind of makes it look like a dot in the center. Um, you can put it in on angle, but again, it kind of gives you a weird line in the middle. So typically with a button, this linear gradient tends to work pretty well. You can adjust it. So, you know, maybe you want the purple at the top. Maybe you want the green at the top instead. So there's multiple ways you can adjust. You can adjust the scale. It'll make it a little bit more um, dramatic. Of course, if you go all the way down to 10, it's going to look like you know, just kind of have a line in there. So we want it to be pretty feathered out. I'm just going to make sure my angle is at 90%. And we can then maybe what we can do is add a little bit of a drop shadow. Let's 
to choose the purple as the drop shadow. And of course you can increase the, the size and the spread and the distance and the angle of the drop shadow here as well. This is um, using the global light is checked. So you'll notice if I'm changing the look of this, it's changing the drop shadow on my um, logo too. So if you don't want it to do that, uncheck this box and then you can adjust that drop shadow on its own. So once you um, get that button to where you like it, then you can add your call to action text in. I just have book now. Um, you could have, you know, something like click and save, um, visit today, you know, learn more. Those are all good examples of um, text that you could use for a call to action. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with my rounded button. Um, and we'll go ahead and move this back up. But I do want to jazz this up just a little bit. So what I might do here is with my rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and add a slight stroke to it. And we will pick the green color. I'm just going to go over here to my foreground color and I'll choose that. And you can adjust this so you can see that it's positioned to the inside. So the bigger I make it, the more it's going to fill up the inside of my button. So I want it to be on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And I don't want it to be too big. I just want it to be kind of a slight stroke. Now, if I wanted to change this and you want that to be a gradient instead, once again, if you click on your gradient options, I have that purple to green. You could try something like that. So I think I am going to choose that and then I'm going to add just a little bit of an inner shadow which I can adjust here as well and then you can really kind of see where that stroke is meeting the inside of that button so you can sort of see um, where it differentiates that purple so that's one thing you can certainly do. Now um, I'll start to go into how to animate this a little bit more. So we will um, go ahead and open. If you go up to window, timeline, you're going to want to open your timeline. So what is um, the easiest way to do this is you can create a frame animation or you can create a video timeline. Either way works. I wanna demonstrate it both ways. So I'm going to go ahead and create that frame animation. Okay, so once the timeline opens, you can see that down here, you can adjust the timing, which we will talk about in just a few seconds. But before I do anything, I want to duplicate the button that I created. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on my rectangle and I'm going to duplicate this layer. So this is an important step before you start doing anything else. Now, of course, we have two of the same buttons. You can't really tell when I turn it on and off that anything's different. So with this copied one, I'm going to add an outer glow to this one. And I'm just going to make sure that we have white selected. I'm going to adjust the size and the spread and the opacity. So I wanted to kind of have a subtle glow to just bring some attention to it. And when I have it to where I want it, I'm going to hit OK. So now in my clips down here, I'm going to duplicate this frame 
by clicking this button. And you'll see I have now two frames that look the same. On this first frame, with this selected, I'm going to turn off this outer glow. The second frame, I want to turn on that outer glow. So now you can see I have what looks like a flashing button. And if I press play down here, it's going to play through. I have this selected to loop forever, which is what you'll want to do. Now, if I don't want this to go quite as fast, I can adjust the timing. Let's see what 0.5 looks like on each. And that slows it down just a little. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so you can see the overall effect. So I'm just adding a very slight animation to that call to action button just to, to grab attention and pull that in. So if this is how I want it and I'm satisfied, what I will do is go to File, Export, and you're going to do a Save for Web Legacy. If you try to just um, you know, save this as a GIF, you're not going to be able to see that animation. You can preview that here. Select GIF. For right now, I'm going to um, do a GIF 128. You'll notice with um, GIFs, you are limited to however many colors that GIF can support. So you'll see, especially if you're using gradients, there's going to be some like weird little blockiness because there's not quite as much. If I select GIF32, it's going to look even worse. Now, you can turn it the whole way up to 256 right here, which is the highest amount you can go. That's going to make your file size a little bigger. For our purposes, I think that's okay. And um, now I can also preview that. So you want to make sure to hit this preview button to make sure that the animation is working. And then you'll hit save. And I'm going to make sure I save it to my folder. So it's saved in my folder. You will see it in here as a GIF. And I can see it in the preview. But you can also open it with any web browser. I'm going to open it in Safari. So you, you can basically view how it would look on the web. So going back to Photoshop, I want to demonstrate how to do this as a video timeline as well. So I'm going to delete this animation. And um, basically what I want to do here is change this to a video timeline. So if you've ever worked in video, um, it kind of functions the same. So what you would do is, you know, same thing. You would create that rectangle. And this is the rectangle to copy. So this works just basically like any other video timeline. You would just take this copy and move it over here. And then you want to stretch out the rest. Of these. So they're about the same. It should have a, a guide here. And then if I play this. can see it adds my animation. Now this is at 10 seconds, so this is a little bit too long. 
So what you want to do is then adjust. Let me go ahead and pull this to half of what it is. Pull this over. So this way is a little bit more intensive. It's definitely nice for, you know, if you wanted to animate text or anything like that, but for our purposes, and you can see it just animates that glow. And so you would save this the same way um, I would probably want this to be just a little bit shorter. But you would go up to File, Export, Save for Web. Make sure you have GIF. Um, you can adjust your colors here. And then you'd want to preview it as well, of course, just to make sure that that animation is working. I'm just going to save this as V2. If I open this, you can see I have both versions. This one moves a little faster. This one moves a little slower. I prefer this one. I think that, um, you know, like I said, if you're doing a little bit more intensive animations, this one works works well um, because it allows you a little bit more freedom. But for just a simple frame animation, I think that this um, works a little better. I can convert this back to a frame animation. And you can see here, I can adjust. So if I wanted to adjust this back to the 0.5, it's much easier to do here. So if I take a look, it's moving a little faster. So that's something you can definitely play with. Um, you know, if you wanted to make it a one second, you could do that. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, I recommend definitely trying out the frame animation first. And if you feel comfortable, um, if you've had experience doing GIFs in the past, you're welcome to do the, the frame animation. But um, of course, if you have any questions, let me know. You just want to make sure, you know, you have all the elements that you need from your ad. Um, like I said, you want to have that uh, consistent imagery, consistent messaging, a little bit of an offer text, something that's going to entice the viewer to click. And we'll go back into... We'll go back into the rubric so you can see what you should submit here. So you should have a zip file containing your um, rough submitted as a PSD file and as your animated GIF. And then you can include the PDF of your magazine ad that your banner was adapted from to compare. And of course, your screenshots that you took during the, the design process. So if you have any questions, Please just let me know.